Hello and welcome to the Saturday edition of The Box Seat. I'm Mark Warwood. Nine races on a bumper card at Ascot on Saturday. The likely track conditions, we're expecting a sunny day around 25 degrees Celsius. The track to be in the good four range and the rail to be in the inside, otherwise known as the true position. Race number one will jump at half past 12. It's the Tab Touch Maiden over 1400 metres. The replay horse can look at tips and scandals Good run on Good Friday. Moon got around the corner, a length and a half. Friars Classic didn't make the bend too well. Clever Dick comes off the rails, though. Here comes Clever Dick starting to stretch. It's Clever Dick at the 150, racing straight past Texas Moon. Tips and Scandals runs on, and so does This Away. This Away on the outside, going home better than them. Quickly ranged up to Tips and Scandals. Tips and Scandals beats all bar subsequent handicap winner this away on Good Friday, and she reapproses Kevin Dick two kilos better than on that public holiday. Bar plates are on her front feet, but she does live in them, according to her trainer, Ben Pierce. So you can judge her on the merits of the form and not be overly concerned. Number one, Clever Dick finished third in the replay race, three quarters of a length off the top pick in this one. Over race in that contest, so uh, Kath Fleming has chosen to take off the winkers here. I think that's a pretty good gear change. Number 11, our Bonnie Girl. She's got the bl blinkers on for the first time. She's a Simon Miller train filly working her way towards her maiden success. She'll get one soon. I don't think it'll be this race though. And then number four, Zon Zol, second in a Bunbury maiden over 1,410 metres last time out, worth considering for the exotics. Race number one, I'm going to go with number eight, Tips and Scandals, to beat one Clever Dick, 11 Our Bonnie Girl and four Zonzol. Race number two at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 10 past one. It is the old Comrade Stakes over 1,600 metres. It's a listed race named after the four-time Group 1 winner. The replay horse can look at the Grand Stand Cup that was won by Falcon Crest on Easter Saturday. Away from Brinkley, immediately under pressure. Red Aura keeps coming with Falcon Crest down the outside. 150 from home, Corporate Larrikin, Red Aura, Falcon Crest is in the middle. Falcon Crest and Red Aura, Red Aura the outside. Falcon Crest the inner, got his head in front. Red Aura comes back, they went to it. Falcon Crest has won two of his last three races, each of which have been at listed level. Team Williams are taking his preparation one race at a time, if you don't mind the cliche, but he was dominant in the Grandstand Cup last time out, at least against the Gallopers that he re-opposes here. There is no red aura in this race. I'm going somewhere else though with my on top selection here. I'm going with number five, Pinzu. He's the only one that didn't go round in the Grandstand Cup. 1,600 metres is certainly his preferred distance. He has raced in bar plates in both of his runs this preparation, but you can judge him on the form book quite well, and he was more than serviceable in those two runs, over 1,000 and 1,100 metres, well short of his ideal trip here. I think he might be the one that gets the chocolates here. From number one, Falcon Crest, and then number four, Northridge. He's not one for nearly a year, and while perhaps not a winning proposition, he's certainly good enough to go in the exotics. And then number three, already famous. Maps is the likely leader here, but it's been a while since uh, he won below 12, uh, 2100 metres rather. You've got to go all the way back to July 2015. My well, top selection in the first feature race of the day, going to go with number five, Pinzu, to beat one Falcon Crest, four Northridge and three already famous. Race number three at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 150. It is the Amelia Park Beef Handicap over 1,200 metres, it's exclusively for three-year-olds. The replay horse can look at pearls and prawns, completing her hat trick at Pinjarra Park. Top of the home straight, Sheerness led the way and he can't get out at the moment though on the hot pot. On the outside, Friars Fancy is there. Now he starts to bullock into the clear and she's through the opening as well. Now here comes pearls and prawns. Pearls and prawns races up, grabs the lead. Took a bit of time to get out, but she's much too good. Class with a capital C, pearls and prawns. And pearls and prawns beat Invisible Pro with ease in the replay race and that galloper was a little bit unlucky not to be another of Simon Miller's winners on Wednesday's card here at Ascot. Pearls and Prawns had showed a touch of class in each of her three wins and her victory over Saturday's course and distance here at Ascot was probably the most impressive of her triumph. She goes on top here. Another progressive type is number one in love with Paris. He beat subsequent winner Amelie Argo in a trial before scraping the paint to win a similar three-year-old race here at Ascot three weeks ago. Three secrets didn't really frank the form all that well, but there was a lot of merit to the performance on face value, and he's certainly a galloper heading in the right direction. Number two, Rock on Tommy. 
He was sound behind uh, Necklet in what was another similar event on Easter Saturday, but certainly the jury remains out regarding his liking for Ascot. He's done all of his winning elsewhere. And then number three, Tango Order was wide throughout last time, and Roy Rogers did report to the stewards that uh, his gelding was jarred up and would go for a brief freshen up. Forgive that run, worth going in the exotics. Well, on top selection in race number three, going with number seven, Pearls and Prawns to remain unbeaten. From number one, In Love with Paris, two, Rock on Tommy, and three, Tango Aura. Race number four at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 2.30. It's the Amelia Park Lodge handicap over 1,200 metres. The replay horse going to look at the Kells finishing fourth on Easter Saturday. In front of G-Boss under the big weight, struggling, and then Lock Roy, but more races. Down past the 175, the leader from Belter. Belter keeps coming back. More races coming to the end of his run. Belter fights back. Belter more races. More races and Belter. Belter kick. More races. Dive. Not sure. The replay race was over 1,100 metres. That was a touch too short for the Kelt. He's the 1,200 metre specialist in this field. It features a number of informed sprinters and the projected fast tempo should set up nicely for him. You've got Gunner Go, Belter, War God, um, Gigante, and probably most importantly of all, Fly from the outside gate. They all want to race on the speed. I think this might play into the hands of the horses that settle midfield or further back. Number five is Floyd. He showed a lot of guts to overcome adversity last time out to get the better of his stable mate in Jingtang. He's going to have to go forward from his gate, but I think Belter will probably stop him from finding the front, and he may well find himself posted wide by a few of his rivals here. Number one, Gigante posted the fastest last 200 metres in the fast race in which more races and Belter gassed G-Boss. And then number six, Belter. I prefer him over shorter, maybe 1,100, certainly 1,000, but he certainly will give you a sight under Taylor Stone. My well, top selection in this really interesting race, going with number four, the Kelt, beat five, Floyd, one, Gigante, and six, Belter.